Well, hello everyone, this is Jason Levine, Worldwide Product Evangelist for Adobe, and in this short video I'm going to take you through the process of creating a multi-track session in Adobe Audition for the Mac. Now before we get started, it's always a good idea to first determine the actual recording device that you're going to use. So to set your audio recording preferences, we're going to go up to the Adobe Audition menu, go to Preferences, and choose Audio Hardware. Now by default on the Mac, you will see under Device Class, Core Audio Selected. The next thing you need to do is actually choose the input device that you're going to be recording into. Now I happen to have an external FireWire device, that's the Motu Traveler that you see here. By default, of course, it will choose whatever you have natively running on your Mac. So without any additional hardware, it will choose built-in input or built-in microphone. You can see that I'm also using the Traveler for my output. And then the master clock setting, you want that to be the same as your input device so that everything stays in sync while you're recording. You have buffer sizes here. Again, these are things which you can set oftentimes in the actual control panel for an external device. They'll have a separate control panel for that. These two work in tandem. They work together. And here's where you can set the sample rate for the session as well, or the default sample rate for the sound card when you launch the application. This typically will change as you move between different types of files. You don't have to pay too much attention to that. Because we're working a lot with video, I typically keep mine set at 48,000 hertz. So I'll click OK on that. Also here you can go to your audio channel mapping. And this is where you can set things like the default stereo input. So you can see that when you're in edit view, you can choose which input is going to be used for default left and right for stereo. Also your default outputs. And you can see that on the Traveler, because I have so many, including outputs which can be used for surround, you have lots of freedom and, and uh, uh, flexibility when it comes to setting these as well. So here's where you can access all of those different settings. So once you've got that done, now it's time to begin the process of recording. And slightly different from the previous version, the moment that you click on multi-track, it's going to ask you to actually build or create the session by default. This is great because it forces you to create a folder to basically organize all of your materials. You can also just go up to File, New, Multi-Track Session and do it there. And if you're actually importing a session from Audition 3, saved out as XML, you can do File, Import, File here and open up those sessions that way. So a lot of flexibility there when it comes to importing and actually saving. So let's go ahead and click on Multitrack. We're going to give it a name. We can choose the folder location. You can see I'm placing it in a desktop folder. Once again, here's where we can choose the actual sample rate of the session itself. And I'm going to keep mine at 48K. The bit depth of the session, typically you'll want to leave this at 32-bit float. Everything inside of Audition for the Mac runs natively at 32-bit float. You can choose to use 16-bit if you want. If you're going to be moving between Pro Tools or other applications, you could choose 24-bit. Typically by default, you'll just want to leave that at 32-bit floating point. And then here's where you can choose what the master fader is going to be. Remember, Audition for the Mac not only allows you to record in mono or stereo, but we also have 5.1 mixing capability. So if you want that master fader, your master output, to represent multi-channel, here's where you can select that. For me, I'm simply going to choose stereo and click OK. And when we do that, it's going to bring you into this familiar interface with all of your tracks and such. And if we go into the editor here, I just want to point out a few of these buttons. You'll see that here's where you can select your ins and outs, your insert effects, sends, and then your track EQ. So now what we need to do is actually choose the inputs specific to each individual track. And I'm going to be basically recording three simple tracks here, a bass track, a drum track, and an organ track. I can click on the flyout menu here and I can choose a mono input, which will again conform to all the different mono inputs on my device, or stereo. And I happen to know that my drums are being fed through a mixer through channels five and six. So that would be stereo channel, so I can select that here, and now I can record directly into this channel. I can also choose the output, which is going to the master. That's going to be that default stereo output on my uh, recording device as well. You can also set your inputs here inside the mixer as well. So let's go ahead and label the track, drums, and this one will call bass, and this one will label organ. Organ will also be on 5 and 6, so we'll set the input there. And bass is going to be a mono input, and we're miking up an amp here in the studio, so I'm going to choose mono Motu Traveler 1. That's going to be input number 1 on my recording device. So I'm going to record these individually, so first 
let's start with the drums. All we have to do to begin is simply click the R icon here, and then we'll go down to the record button here and click record. All right, let's take it. Okay, so now that we're done with the drums, we'll simply disarm the drum track, arm the bass track, wind to the beginning, and let's roll it. So now that we've finished recording everything, now it's time to start mixing down and actually adding effects and finalizing the entire mix. And you can see that I went ahead and actually added a couple of additional tracks. We've got some dueling guitars here and a piano just to flesh out the music. And now I want to begin processing it. Well, you've got lots of cool new things that you can do in Audition for the Mac. And the first of the, is the way that you actually add the effects. Now, some things are quite similar to the way they used to work. You'll see that in the editor panel here, you can access your effects sends and your track EQ directly here just by clicking on these buttons. So in fact, if you actually want to add a track effect to the drums, for instance, we can click on the flyout menu, choose amplitude and compression, or perhaps just start adding a reverb to this. And let's go ahead and add something like a studio reverb. So we can pull this up. And when I do that, you'll notice that it also appears here inside the effects rack, which is docked. But you might also notice that we have something new clip effects. Yes, so now you can add global effects for the entire track that will affect all of the different files that are living in a single track, but you can also have individual effects on single clips. So if we want a studio reverb over everything, and by the way, if we want to access the parameters of that, I can just double click it here from within the effects rack or within the panel right here. I can choose something like a preset. Let's go to drum plate large. Let's make this really wet. Let's take a quick listen. Let's go ahead and solo this. We can play it back. Let's take a listen. Off. Okay, you get the idea. So there we have now Studio Reverb, and anything that we place in this track will be affected by that reverb. But if we simply want a compressor just on these drums, just on this actual clip, just have the clip selected, go up to the Effects menu here, and choose Amplitude and Compression, Tube Modeled Compressor. And now you'll see that in Clip Effects, we have the Tube Modeled Compressor applied. So we can start with something like a preset. Let's go to something like the, uh, the Leveler here. Again, we can play this back and take a quick listen. You'll notice that now it's compressing, but watch, if I go to my track effects, I can disable the reverb and just keep the compression. Let's wind it back again, and let's play it. So that's one way to add your effects inside the editor. Of course, you can also do it inside the mixer. So if I wanted to add additional effects to the drums here, again, track-based effects, I can simply click here, go to something like Filter in EQ, Parametric Equalizer, or again, I can add something like a distortion to this or one of our mastering processes. Again, it appears here. This is telling us that this is quite CPU intensive. That's okay. It'll add it to our track effects, and now we can add this as well. Very, very simple. And one of the other really cool things that you can do is that you can bus or group tracks together and add effects to multiple clips at the same time. So you'll notice again that I have two guitar tracks, and I'd like to affect both of these the same by basically putting them onto a bus and adding a global reverb or glo glo global stereo expansion, something like that. So I'm going to solo these two tracks, and I can do it here or within the mixer panel, and go over to Sends, and I can choose Add Bus Stereo. And you'll see that it creates Bus A. Now let's go over to the mixer here. We can name this call it guitar effects. And now I'm going to twirl this up and twirl down my sends. Again, we've got this nice flexible interface here. This is going to allow you to twirl up or twirl down 
individual modules to just customize the view. I'm in a, a 1280 by 800 view right now, so things are starting to get a little tight. This just makes it easy to view everything uh, very simply, no matter what resolution you're working in. So now we have the guitar effects bus, and I just need to tell Audition to send those actual guitars to the bus. And by the way, just by clicking on the icon, you can move these things around. Okay, so I have guitar one, guitar two, these are the tracks. Here's the bus they're going to. So let's go ahead and twirl up effects here and twirl down sends. And I'm going to send this guitar to the guitar effects bus that's already going there. And let's send the second guitar to the guitar effects bus as well. Now you've got individual volume and pan controls. So again, I can determine how much of the guitar I'm actually sending to the bus. You'll notice that you also have a pre and post fader button here. Let's go ahead and set this just at zero. Set this one at zero as well. And let's just do a slight pan on these. We've already got them panned in the actual mix, the dry balance of them. So let's go ahead and just send a little bit of a pan to the bus as well. And now we can twirl this up, twirl down effects. And let's go ahead and add a nice big reverb to that as well. So we'll go into Studio Reverb. And I'm going to choose something like a vocal plate. And do a lot of decay. Let's drop this a bit like that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and solo and play these back. Let's make sure that our guitars are there. There we go. And let's take a listen. Disabled. So you can hear there's a nice little reverb tail at the end there. So now we have a global control, and this fader will also control the volume based on the settings of your pre and post fader that you have in your bus as well. So lots of flexibility there. So once you've got all of your mix laid out and targeted the way that you want, now it's time or now you're ready to actually export it. Now remember, you can also add effects on the master control as well. So if you wanted to add something like a global compressor or global limiter to really even out the dynamics of all of your tracks, you can go in here and add something like our multiband compressor. Lots of different presets in here to get you started. I happen to really like the broadcast and classical ones. The Pop Master isn't bad either. This is just going to give you a nice little boost, uh, make everything a bit more even. You want to make sure that you have the brick wall limiter setting enabled. This will prevent any overs or digital clipping from happening. And again, it's just going to smooth things over and make it sound a bit more polished. So we can set that, go up to the file menu, choose export, and now you can see that we have the option to do a multi-track mix down for the entire session. Now, if we had made a selection inside the editor, we could export only that selection. We also have the option here to export the entire session, a Final Cut Pro XML, or an OMF. So here's where you access all of those different things so that you can actually share this session even with other applications. Very cool. So let's go ahead and choose multi-track mix down, entire session. Let's go ahead and stick it on the desktop. You can choose your file format here. You can make changes, and if you wanted to actually do any kind of sample rate conversion, you can do that here. You can change the channels. You can change the bit depth. You can also enable any kind of dithering if you're going from 32 down to 24, 16, or 8-bit. Noise shaping if you so desire. Again, tell it where it needs to go. Click Save. And now what you'll see, it's actually working. It's mixing all that down, and it's done. And there's our file. There's our mix. So now if I simply double click on this, it'll bring it into the editor and now I can begin the process of cutting this, adding metadata, and then exporting this uncompressed PCM file down to something like an MP3 for easy web delivery or for sending to iTunes or any kind of uh, audio player application.